I sit down, I light one up, and pour myself a drink, and I have found that it picks me up, it gives me time to think. Been a long day, you know it's true. But I'm feeling right at home. And now I must say that time is due. Let's get on with the show. Not just blowing smoke. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Not Just Blowing Smoke, coming at you live from my smoking room, somewhere in the Rocks Village Historic District of Haverhill, Massachusetts. And uh, be sure to subscribe to us here on Facebook or YouTube if you're watching the stream live. If you're listening to it after the fact, be sure to subscribe to us wherever you're getting it from, whether that be on Podbean or iHeartRadio or Pandora or Spotify, iTunes, Google, or wherever else you may have got this. We're everywhere. I am Pastor Padron, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Paul Pablo Maduro. Hello, folks. And Dave, who is floating above the fireplace. Hello, Dave. How did you get above my fireplace? <laughs> it's a kind of magic. People have told me that this place is haunted. Yes, now we know it is, we, for sure. Now we know it is. Um, uh, and for, well, that's maybe a little private joke that, that I need to cut you all in on. Uh, my house is very old. It was built in 1780. And so um, uh, a lot of people have, uh, you know, back then there weren't places to, you know, there weren't funeral homes that, come and take the bodies away you when somebody died they died there and stayed there got viewed there this was actually the viewing room where that happened so um and joke about the ghosts okay people um some people can't stay in my house they get freaked out yeah yeah it's true i, I had one person house it for us yeah and when we came back he said i'm never doing that again <laughs> He, and he was sure that there were ghosts or that he could not wait for us to come back. Door so slamming, yeah. creaking going on, yeah, unexplained. things, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, uh, and, and the guy was dry, so it's not like he was drinking. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where all this stuff came from. Was it a but, cold, dark, windy night when he there? <laughs> you know, I think it was, actually. It was, uh, you know, because I think we had uh, vacationed in Florida that year and mm -hmm. left from here and, and um, you know, but uh, you can't have everything, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so we lost a house sitter that, that uh, week. But uh, we're doing something special tonight. And, and special. part of that is we are um, broadcasting from my smoking room, my library in my house. This is my man cave. And um, uh, actually, it was Dave who had the idea of doing a show from here. Yeah, in the baby. middle of winter, we had the fire going, the fireplace and everything. You've heard me say, I don't smoke outside. I light the fire and sit up. And I put on my unicorn slippers and get by the fire. And now you see that that is true. I was not exaggerating in the least and um uh, so the change of location is one of the things that makes this special the second thing is is that uh we are doing something uh we've never done before and that mm. is a uh, focusing the show around a blind tasting of similar type tobaccos this was actually pablo maduro's idea and um i was very impressed being that you know he's you know, he enjoys his pipe, but cigars are really where his... Uh, yeah, not to the extent that you gentlemen do. Yeah, cigar is really where he, he goes, but he really thought this would make a great episode. Mm. And, and um, 
So uh, we had the idea of doing tobaccos that not only were similar in blend, but were similar in style. So we have three different coin cut tobaccos, and you see them there on the table. And, um, uh, of course, you know, we kind of know what the three are, but we don't know what, you know, they're all in identical holders. So we don't know which really is which, uh, unless you can tell by looking at it. Um, and uh, there's one that should give itself away a little bit, but the other two are really kind of close. But we're going to be seeing, you know, um, what we think of these three tobaccos. They're all Virginia Perique blends. Um, and um, they're all in a coin cut. And we're going to see which one we like best. We're going to see which one we like best with the Woodford Reserve, which is what we yeah. are pairing tonight. Um, and it's just the three of us. You know, it's raining out, so Pat really couldn't <laughs> risk coming <laughs> because it's just so, so dangerous. His car wouldn't make it. Yeah, his car, his car wouldn't make it. And so... You know, Paul was telling us, uh, you know, on his way here, there was like an inch deep puddle he went through. Mm -hmm. And when he saw the side splash, you know, make it up past the rim of his tire, he he, call, he, he texted Pat and said, look, just stay where you are. Be safe. Mm -hmm. It's horrible out there. It's dangerous. We don't want mm -hmm. you to die or get in a wreck. So please just just have an opus and be happy wherever you're at. And um, I, I don't know that he ever replied to that. Did he? Did no, he, he never replied. He never replied. So, so he, he knew hope, I was right. We can only hope that he isn't <laughs> alone and hurt on the side on of the, the road, road somewhere. You know, wet. You know, wet, you know, out on a cold February night, mm -hmm. you know. So maybe we should have a moment of silence for Pat. I don't know. No, that's just no, no mm -hmm. moment. No, of no, no. Okay, very good. So uh, tonight is the coin toss episode, mm. and so we are gonna uh, toss, toss a coin to your piper. Toss these coins into the pipe and see which we like best. See if we can guess which is which. Um, and I'm very interested. You know, now these are all tobaccos we've done on the show, mm. uh, so it's not like they should be completely unfamiliar. Um, I, I realize I'm more familiar with tobaccos than the two of you and certainly of Paul. So I'm really interested to see if you guys can pick out which tobacco is which. Mm -hmm. And what are the tobaccos that are in there? The tobaccos that we are that we have are the Davidoff Flake Medallions and oh, Escudo man. Navy Deluxe and Peterson Deluxe Navy Rolls. Those are the three ones that we're doing. But like I said, they're out of the packaging, and they've been put out and moved around so that, you know, unless you really know your stuff, you're not going to be able to know which is which. So right off the bat, let's let's start with you, Paul. Mm. What are you... Just pulling. What are you picking Pony. up in the pipe that you are smoking? And we started with the one. I'm going to point at the one that. Uh, uh, it's on yeah, uh, the one that's closest left. to me. Yeah, yeah the one, one that's closest left. to me or and Dave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, initially, I'm picking up a lot of that nice fruit, uh, tangy citrus, mm -hmm. uh, spice from the Perique, uh, bready notes, mm -hmm. um, and bread? some earth. Earth. Um, but very well balanced. But it, it the uh, this one here, I, I, the spice notes really come through. It, mm. It's a little more uh, of a, uh, the, it's a, I'll call it a, it's a tangy citrus spice is yeah. what I would call it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right off the bat. Uh, Retro hail, um, nice, smooth, but rich spice too. Rich spice. Yeah. And it's a little tangy as well. Yep. Now with the Woodford, it's bringing out more of, to me. A little bit more of the earthy, bready spice notes. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the pushes back the fruit notes a little bit. Um, the tang isn't really there anymore. But I'll tell you, um, if you like Virginia Perique, whatever this blend is, <laughs> is very, very good. It's good, huh? Very, like very it? good. You yes, like yes. I really, really do. Dave, mm. what about you? Do you have any uh, uh, notes on this? 
You know, well, I'm definitely getting on the bread and the, like a little bit of the the fruit. Definitely taste the uh, Cavendish. There was a Cavendish core to this one mm -hmm. from pressing it into my bowl. Um, and I I concur with Paul that the uh, it's um, well I concur with Paul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very. Good. That's all that needs to be said, Dave. That's mm. all. That I concur. Uh, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's all that needs to be said right there. Um, so for me, uh, certainly the that stewed fruit kind of notes, the, the citrus. I, I am picking up on that like a white bread kind of mm -hmm. bread note. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a little sweetness here um, that's really, really nice. The spice is there, but where I really get it is on the retrohale. Oh, yeah. In the retrohale, this stuff is a, almost a beast as far yeah. as the spice Very goes. Very rich. And, and you're right, too, Paul, that there is a citrusy tinge mm -hmm. even in the retrohale. So yes. there's that citrus zing, uh, really deep, rich kind of stone fruit notes, you know, and some maybe a little bit of wood, a little bit of hay here and there. But very, very nice. Well, so and on the on the palate, the spice notes isn't a beast, but it's tingling my palate. It's mm. tingling my tongue. It, it, tingling it's it, in, in every drawer, I can feel it. Mm. Mm. While uh, you're being tingled, uh, the <laughs> chat the over here yeah. wants to know uh, what a coin cut is. Mm. Well, that mm. is an excellent question. Let's uh, do a little educational stuff. Yep, and that was asked multiple times. Okay, um, so and also by cut, John Rudos, yeah. A coin cut looks like this. Okay, and I'm going to hold this up for you. You got this flake that is real thin cut, but it's round. This stuff was made as a uh, like a big sausage, and then sliced real thin. And so you can see the tobacco spun around it. Do you see that? Can I get close like that? Yep, yep, yep. Yep, you see that? See how it's spun around like that? Now, I'll tell you, this is not what's in the pipe right now. This is, I just picked this up. This is from the second, the second bowl there. Um, but that's what's called a coin shape and, um, or a coin cut. So that's, a, so this is actually what's in the pipe right now. This right here. And this coin is a little bit more. Can you see that? Mm hmm. You can go closer. Yep. I can yep. go closer. Whoop. Yep. My there you go. slippers. Yep. See that? Very, very nice. All right. Now, I'm going to probably get ahead of myself with this, but I think just in case a, a future question comes through, Dave, but when you're dealing with coin slices, and again, when I first started smoking pipes with you guys um, and we did our first coin the, the my first uh, tendency well the tendency was for me to actually pull it apart okay kind of pull it apart kind of break it all down and then pack my pipe I learned after the fact that what some people do and I don't know if you do have done this I did this tonight was to fold the coin mm -hmm. fold it either in half or in quarters and just stuff the pipe that way and uh, so I d ended up doing maybe a coin slice and a half to pack my pipe tonight. <laughs> did you guys fold it or did you break it up? So the way I do it is I take the coin, uh, especially when it has like a, uh, like the one we started with has Cavendish the, the Cavendish or, in the yep, center. Yep. I fold it on top of the Cavendish and stuff it down so, so the you, Cavendish is on the bottom. Okay, so you took the both, curled both it ends, yep. cur yep. moved it in the middle, or kind of fold it in the middle, and then just packed it that way? Yeah. All right. I, I didn't do that, Dave. I just kind of folded it in half, mm -hmm. kind of put the end in, and then folded it while it was in the pipe so that I don't even know where the Cavendish pipe <laughs> is, but um, maybe I'll try that next time. Yep. I've learned that trick from... Uh, Amos get coin slice. Yep. Okay. And what what it uh, what I found that it does when I do that is you'll smoke through the Virginia, and then when you get to the Cavendish, it's like a burst of sweetness, okay. and then it'll go away back to the Virginia. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So then you get yeah. that layered effect. Yeah. There was no there was no methodology to how I was packing my pipe other than just folding it. So <laughs> I'll try that next time. <laughs> mm. Um, you can take the coins and 
rub them out like you said, like you did in the beginning. Yeah. You could do deliberate folds like Dave was talking about, which basically layers the tobacco in a particular yeah. way so that at some point you're going to get that the sweetness of the, the Cavendish bullseye in there. Um, or you can just literally just, uh, you know, fold them up and, and throw them into your pipe and stuff them in there mm -hmm. uh, any which way, which is what I happen to do um, with this particular one. The plus of keeping the flake basically whole and folding it or just pushing it into your pipe is that it's going to, the burn is going to be a little bit slower. And that changes how you are going to experience the, the blend of tobaccos. Um, when you break it all up into ribbon again, uh, these particular flakes, all three of them, are very fine cut. They're almost a shag. So it's going to burn quicker. Mm. And that is going to change how the tobacco performs in your pipe, mm -hmm. whatever pipe you have it in. So trying to do it in those different ways is going to create different experiences. So you might want to see which one you like best and in which pipe you like it best mm -hmm. if you have multiple pipes. Um, are there any other questions right now on nope. social media or anything like that? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Mm. I'll tell you, if you like Virginia Perique, and specifically the Perique part, mm -hmm. this is this this blend, whatever we're smoking. It's really, really, do you have really any, good. Do you have any guesses? Uh, I'm not. I'm going to withhold until You're we gonna go through. You're going to withhold until yeah, the end. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to jinx myself right now. <laughs> 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 it's a little too early. Mm -hmm. You have any uh, any guesses, Dave? As no, what might be? I or have no guess whatsoever. I can't remember which one of them had the Cavendish in the middle, so that pretty <laughs> much doesn't help. <laughs> no, oh. no. If you don't know which one had the bullseye. Uh, you won't be able to guess which one this is. Boy, that, mm. re that retro hail is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It really is. Can you feel the heat, Paul? Yes, I can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's very comfortable. Mm. And i got to be honest with you, Dan. I, um, think, I think the reason why I agreed to, to <laughs> doing a blind taste test once Dave came up with the idea of doing it here was really just to do it here. <laughs> 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 I wanted to sit. I wanted to experience what you have told us time and time again about how this is your safe haven how this is your little escape this room and i'll tell you this is a great room man. we do have an, another question that we want they want to know uh or specifically john rudos wants to know if we offer all three at the store yes all three of mm -hmm. these are offered at the store yes you can come to twins or you can call twins and uh, get these things um, from both locations and uh, uh, all three of these blends are are um, well loved and well reviewed on TobaccoReviews.com as mm -hmm. well. They've mm -hmm. been around for a long, long time. Um, and you know, like I said, they're all Virginia Periques. Um, but um, uh, and they're all kind of stalwarts in that blend uh family uh, virginia Creek or vapor is it's Vapors. sometimes called yes now here i'm letting you into a little bit of my my life showing you a little bit of my man cave here there's nothing you know I, uh, this is a I, I i like this it's you know it's comfortable it's it's night i can have people in here with, and not feel like they're going to be dirty or they can <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? There's some places you go, you wish you hadn't gone. You know, this is, you know, it's it's not ostentatious. There's there's not millions of dollars of stuff in here, but it is very comfortable. Very comfortable. And if you like older things, yes. um, you know, just staring at the ceiling, which is all unfinished. It's an open ceiling, and so you can see the cross beams that are original to the house from 1780. It's just very, very um to me, this is this is like a smoking room oh, dream, yes. mm -hmm. and the smoke just kind of goes up the fireplace here. Um, you know, I I'm like you know Paul and Dave. You know, my my favorite place to smoke is outside, um, and so in the in the warmer months, 
uh, which is like July and August <laughs> here in New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, we have the we have a three season screened in porch, and that's where I really like to to sit. Um, but when it's too cold to be outside, and you can be helped by lighting a fire, this just is awesome. And you know, I got my TV, you know, which is actually behind where the camera is. Um, I've got the computer here. We've got music in the room. <coughs> All my books. Um, you can see the pastor and Pastor Patron is actually really, truly legit. I have my neat antique pipe lamp from Kurt Kendall. <laughs> Lord only knows where he got it or where you know, but it's it's actually a really cool piece. Um, and uh, I have a little closet right here. Which, you know, open up and there's all my pipe stuff in there, some tobaccos, my liquor cabinets down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife actually did co-opt some of my shelves for some of her books up there. But uh, that's fine. So right here by the fire, it's all very easy to get hold of things. Now, I want to know from you guys, d do you guys have... A man cave or something at your house. You may, I, I know you both may not be able to smoke where you're at, but <laughs> do you guys have a room that is like devoted to your kind of relaxing, chilling, being a man? No. <laughs> 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 that's why you work 50 hours a week it's twin, called twin smoke twin, shop twin smoke shop that's where it is yeah no at, i and it's funny because i <clears throat> i used to live in the country and i had a much larger home out there mm -hmm. and even there i never really had a room in the house mm -hmm. uh that i could call my own i did however have um an older lodge that was part of the property when they built the house before i took ownership of it. It was a new development. There was a lodge where they, uh, the developer was showing the uh, plans of the uh, neighborhood and the homes that they were going to build. Mm -hmm. And when I bought it, that became mine. It was mm. they, they offered to tear it down. I said, no, keep it. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, it was done up inside. And that was my escape place you know yeah. I, I didn't really yeah. do, I, I had a lot of plans when i first moved in there mm -hmm. none of them came into fruition um, i never really had the time and i kind of lost interest in, in building it out further right. but it was it had a uh, a old uh barrel that was used for fire right um and it actually and in because it was used as a uh place to show off the plans of the uh development uh, they put in a heater uh, an actual gas heater. So I fired that up a few times during the winter time, but mm -hmm. that lodge, you opened up the big doors and, and the windows and it, it was just a great place to hang out, um, you know, with friends and all that. But other than that, no, no. I never had a place That's, to call my own. I, I feel bad for you, Paul. <laughs> next house, Dan. Uh, next house. The next house. I, I, now that I've seen this, I'm going to want a little study mm -hmm. with a fireplace. Yeah. <laughs> You need a little study with a fireplace. Yeah, you, know? you hear like that, Nicole? Professor in Narnia, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. What about you, Dave? Do you have a man cave at your place? Um, pretty much my whole house. I mean, with a, <laughs> uh, my my it's 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 my uh it's my I have a really small apartment and I've got you know, um, I live in the, I I actually my bedroom's in my living room and my each of my kids have their own room because they never had rooms growing up. So I wanted to, I gave up my You're bedroom. sacrificing. I sacrificed. So, so and you sleep uh, on the couch? The, yeah, uh, no, I have a bed in my in my in my living room. <laughs> you have a bed in your living room. I have a bed in my living it's room. It's not like something that transforms into a couch. It's just no, a bed. Just a bed. It's yep. in the living room. Yep. A little weird, but it is what it is, and it's comfy. But we have a nice full size couch mm -hmm. in the in the living room too. So, and uh, but the uh, the apartment was um, one of the last the last building. Where they allowed smoking, mm. so I'm grandfathered in. Really? Yeah. And I don't know what they did, but yeah, that's cool. I we've I've had me and both the kids. Um, I say kids loosely. They're 21 and or oh, 22 and 20 now. Pretty mm. much gonna be soon. And uh, the smoke, and uh, the, you can't really you can't walk in there. You can't even smell it. It's unbelievable. It's great. 
what do you do to take care of it? I, I have this. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Um, you know, every once in a while we'll we'll spray like Febreze or Lysol, you know, but that's just because we do it out of habit, not really any need to. It doesn't smell. I ask people when they come over, you know, does it smell like smoke? And they'll be like, no. And so, and those are from non-smokers. Mm. So I don't know if it's the way they made the building because uh, it was originally for like smokers, but we don't, uh, it doesn't hold on to the smoke. Well, that's good. You know, Mandy, my wife is a non-smoker and, and uh, she has commented about how this room does not smell she's also commented how my car also does not smell now do you keep the windows closed or open when you smoke in the car when i smoke i'll crack a, i'll crack yeah. a window yeah. or moonroof i love the moonroof thing because then the smoke just goes whoop yep. right up out of the back of the car yep and you know i keep up with the the ashes and the ashtray you can see like my nice uh, uh driftwood ashtray here with the little copper insert, very nice, is, uh, you know, clean. And so I, I think that's where a lot of the stink comes from. It's from the leftovers. It's the butts. It's yep. the ashes that really um, do the smell. And um, so if you take care of that, you know, um, I think that, I think that goes a long way towards mm -hmm. eliminating the smell. You know, in my case, you know, this, the, the fireplace just pulls the smoke, you know, right out. Like, you know, the three of us are smoking in here. There isn't a cloud of smoke up above us or anything. Um, now, being that this was built in 1780, one could argue that my, the, the bedroom of my oldest daughter, she no longer lives here. But maybe her room is full of smoke. I have no idea. <laughs> I've never been up there when I've been smoking down here, so I have no idea. But I believe the smoke just goes right out the chimney. And so I don't need any ionizers. I don't need any expensive equipment. I don't need – just turn that on and boom, mm -hmm. you're good. Really, I mean, I mean, all three of us are smoking. And then once the smoke leaves the pipe, it just goes away. It just goes away. It does. Yeah, it yeah. really does. It's just – there's nothing hanging over. There's no halo. There's, it's just – gone no. well i think really that's also in partial because it's a 300 freaking year old house true there's plenty of drafts probably true. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's kind yeah. of what i just said yeah. You know? yeah but you know either way it's getting out mm -hmm. yeah and it's nice and warm mm -hmm. you know oh yeah very, nice very comfortable mm -hmm. i gotta tell you though that fire is just i love it mm -hmm. i really i, I, I miss that. having a fireplace yeah i really do so wood good. stoves are great mm -hmm. you you know, and gas fireplaces are cool. You turn them on, turn them off. There's something about throwing some wood into a fireplace. The smell, the 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 crackle of it. You just it, it's it, you can't replace that with other things. You know, I I know that if I put a wood stove in there, you know, I maybe the house would retain a lot more heat. It would kick off a lot more heat, but the the ambiance that this creates yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Now I've been known with this type of couch and this type of position <laughs> to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll keep you up. All. I understand. Thanks, Dave. But with throw, the, with, it's that, going to be maybe a little harder with now that we adding the ambiance of the fireplace. Mm -hmm. So you know, if by, if by the third bowl the third yeah. tobacco that we have if you see me nodding off just yell into the mm -hmm. microphone because i mean you know this men fire gates that's one it's almost genetic you know if, you, if there's a fire there men are going to just yes go right there stare, stare, at, right the fire, <laughs> stare at it and and not speak they're not going to do anything they're just going to fire gaze and it's uh it's, yeah it is kind of mesmerizing Mm -hmm. Well, we used to when I lived in the country, we would make we would do we had a burn pit, mm -hmm. and that was our escape. Mm. Um, so really, I put I put the burn pit in the driveway because it's right off the garage, and, right. and just set a couple couple of chairs and grab your drink and cigar and just. But you're right, you're gazing. I didn't do anything but gaze at that fire. Yeah, just sit it, and it stare is, at it. It is just it is very me me uh, mesmerizing. I wish you could look at the fire, Dave, but you're up there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's such a shame. We'll look down on it. It's such a shame. Yeah, well. Mm. Uh, all right. Well, it's been about 30 minutes, so I think we should 
get another pipe. All right. And let's which uh, which one do you want to do next, Paul? Let's do the second one right here. The second one, the yeah. one in the middle. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Let's see, we'll get up with that. And uh, I'll give you a couple of wheels there. You. Yep. yep. And let's see. There's two for you, Dave. All right. I'll take a couple here. And um, take some of those pieces there. And so I'll show you what I'm going to do. Loading up the pipe. Now that you can see it. Right here. See that? There we go. And I'm just going to take the pieces. And what I'm going to do is fold them over on each other. And then I'm going to put it into the pipe and kind of twist it around mm. see that and then kind of tamp it down with the thumb there and that's what you got good right there see that very good oh, oh, there we go there we go right on okay so let's take this back to the seat <clears throat> And start working on the light. Good draw. So, first thing I'm going to want to know is, you know, what are the notes from this? How is it different hmm. from the first uh, tobacco we tried? And... How is it going to go with the Woodford? Well, it's definitely a lot more woody, yes. earthy, leathery. Yeah, I'm not picking up the spice notes as much as I was the first one. Okay. So I do agree with Dave. A lot more uh, wood, earth, subtle sweetness, mm -hmm. but the spice... Yeah, the wood the sweet. The spice notes are almost missing they're, they're not not anywhere near as very promised. smooth creamy retro hail mm. mm -hmm. well retro hail has a lot more spice on it yeah the retro Ooh. hail is quite spicy yes very, Ooh. very. That's 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 where the spice is, right Ooh. there, right in the retro hill. It's not, really? not not on the palate. It's on the retro. Not getting really. What was that, Dave? Or? I'm not getting. You I'm not getting spice from my. Are you sure you got the right coin? I, I, <laughs> you sure you're uh, retro hailing, Dave? I'm not seeing anything come out your nose. <laughs> Just a little bit. Not not. I feel like I got <clears throat> a lot more spice from the last one in the retro hill than this one. Oh, this one has some bear. My nose is mm -hmm. still tingling. Woo! Yeah, that's a beast. <laughs> uh, now with a little bit of Woodford washing right. around the palate. All right, let's get the mm. beer in here. This is almost sweeter. Mm -hmm. What? Um, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, now the Woodford brought out more sweetness. It did. Oh, I haven't tried it with the Woodford yet. Yep. Maybe that's what yep. Yeah. It's sweeter. <sighs> oh, richer, that, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you right now, that retro hail even got stronger with the Woodford. Mm. Oh, yeah. So oh, it, yeah, it did. So what it did Ooh. is it Ooh. initially, Ooh. without any pairing, earthy, woody, subtle, subtle sweetness, very little spice. Yep. But the spice on the retro hail was a beast. The Woodford brought out the sweetness on the palate yep. and amped up the spice on the retro. Oh, my heavens. How true is that? Mm. Yep. I have oh, to... I'm on fire. Yep. Cheyenne should have tried some of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm on fire. <laughs> Cheyenne. There you goes your cold. You'll, you'll get to meet Cheyenne in a few weeks. We'll, we'll be having the newbies on the podcast in a few weeks. 
and uh, Cheyenne is our um, uh, branding and social media person at Twins. And uh, I've gotten her oh, enjoying man. a pipe. And um, Oh, you did? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. She's bought a pipe. Has oh. a, she loves it. Oh, nice. good for you. All right. Yep. Yep. Sent a picture of her smoking a pipe to Kurt. Mm -hmm. Indoctrinating her qu uh, early here. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he was very, you know. <laughs> hey, now. Hey, now. That's He's being surrounded. Yeah. Ooh, that retro <laughs> ale is totally kicked I, in. I got, I got the facepalm meme back <laughs> from, from my text. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, she has, she has her sinuses were a little stuffy today. And, uh, man, if she's, you know, just retrohaled some of this. There you go. Problem solved. Just mm -hmm. make sure you have a oh, yeah. big wad of Kleenex right there. Who needs NyQuil? Catch everything that fall, falls <laughs> out. Good grief. Yeah, the medicinal uses of tobacco. Mm -hmm. You know. Retrohale something spicy and strong, and your sinuses will be cleared out right quick. Mm -hmm. All right, so so far this is my favorite pairing. Okay. Well, you're you again maybe because you like Virginias more than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, I like I love Virginias, but I love Virginia Perique. Like, and I love the 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 spice that the Perique gives you. Uh, or the 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 spice there, the pre gives you in that blend. Um, I did, like I said, I didn't get that initially. It had to, it had to wait until the Woodford pairing to really blast to get that blast mm -hmm. of spice. Yep. But I'll tell you, it's another another nice tobacco. Yeah, the, the more I'm smoking it, the more I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. It's very different from the first one. First yep. one's very fruity. Yeah. And um, almost very Virginia forward with the pre kind of. Yeah. Tingling, or coming around yep. behind and yep. giving a little zing to it. Um, this doesn't have the citrus notes. No, it does that not. The first one had. Um, this is more straight, dark fruit. You know, woody, earthy, like you were saying, Dave. Um, hmm. But there is a. It seems to me there's there's a little bit more perique in this second one, and it is. You know, especially when you retrohale it, you know it's there. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there is that little bit of raisiny, figgy kind of flavor on the palate. Um, I think it is more, you know, wood and subtle fruit notes. Um, that's that's what I'm getting off of this. I, I but I want to stop talking and smoke more. Right. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. There at the fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because if if since these are all vapors, mm -hmm. how different the spice notes are between each one that we've had so far. Mm -hmm. The spice note in the first one was very pronounced on the at least with me on the palate mm -hmm. and on the retro, but more on the palate. The second one, not so much on the palate, but the retro on the retro, yes. it was really really mm -hmm. intense. All right. Um, so yesterday, Mandy handed me a piece of mail that really just kind of brought chills down my spine. <laughs> it was a jury summons. Oh, form. gosh. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I can't believe it. It can't have been, you know, three years since my last jury uh, summons. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it was, as a matter of fact, it's been five years. It ha hasn't even been the, you know, it wasn't like they just finished three or even four. But um, hmm. uh, so May 19th, I have to um, uh, report for jury duty. And um, I'm nervous because the last time I went for jury duty, which was the first time I'd ever been called for jury duty, I ended up being put on a big murder case, and it was almost three weeks long. Oh boy! And um, it was it was uh, it was it on the f from from a court side of things. It, it was awesome seeing everything happen, and it was a it was a uh, a gang uh, murder. Um, and you know, it was a shooting, and it the shooting went wrong. They they shot the wrong guy, and <laughs> it was it was it was really bad. 
um, there was all sorts of weird stuff going on too. There was um, jury intimidation that happened. Um, people needed, you know, moved around. You know, they don't sequester ju juries into like courtrooms anymore. Um, it, they see it as just too expensive to do. Um, but, you know, th there were a whole lot. We weren't allowed, when we were there, it got to the point where we weren't allowed to leave for anything. Like, they were not even for lunch. They would bring food to us. And um, uh, it, w it was really interesting. But, um, you know, I'm, 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 I have mixed feelings about being called to jury duty again. Have either of you been called to jury duty before? Yes. Yep. Yep. And, I was and the. What uh, happened, Dave? Uh, we were, uh, um, um, it was the, we got told about, they, the way they do it in New Hampshire is they bring a whole bunch of people in and, uh, and then they have like a bunch, at least this is the way it happened for me is they had a bunch of trials and they randomly pick people from the jury pool of like, you know, like 60, 80 people that were there. And those, they got selected for the first one. And then we had to go, um, and then they'd bring in like another case and they'd randomly pick. And that would happen two or three times. And if you didn't get picked, you had to keep coming back until, you know, uh, you were picked. And then after that was done, uh, we got to the, uh, um, I think it was like the the so third if, day. So if you got through the first day, yeah, and you hadn't been picked, right, you had to show up the next day, yeah, until you you had to show up for jury duty until you got put on. If they the had jury. enough cases, if not, they would have you know after all the cases were done, you got you know you were sent home. Okay, but I got picked on a case, and we were waiting to, um. To, to go called into the courtroom mm -hmm. and um, uh, I, I don't know who it was but I think the bailiff probably or something like that came in and said that uh, we could all go home because the guy pled so he pled, pled out. he pled out yeah so that was that was it luckily it didn't last long mm -hmm. yeah what about you Paul have you ever been called for jury duty before I have and uh, it was Back in the mid-80s, 1986 to be exact. You don't look that old, Paul. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't 21 yet, but mm. uh, and, it, and it was an assault uh, case mm. um, where these uh, one, one, one uh, defendant was accused of assaulting these two other guys with his car. Um, and uh, it ended up being just a one-day one jury duty for me uh, mm -hmm. but it was very interesting uh you know you 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 like nothing like what dan had gone through with you know weeks of of all that and uh but y y i think the jury duty the, the process is very interesting you know you're seeing the def the defense and the prosecution you know give you their case um and the i was telling dan earlier uh the 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 one thing i remember was obviously they have to you have to the prosecution has to prove their case, and they have to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> uh, in my eyes, and I think in most of the jury's eyes, the prosecution just wasn't able to produce the evidence needed. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the jury as a whole did believe uh, the uh, uh, the plaintiffs um, because when they went when they were on the stand, they all the two the two gentlemen who were uh, uh, the plaintiffs had both had pointed to the defendant and said that's the one who did it, mm -hmm. and we believed them. Mm. I believed them, but when it came to actually, you know, when you're in the jury room trying to decide guilty or innocent, I I knew they didn't produce they did not produce enough evidence to to show a, beyond a, to, a reasonable doubt. doubt. So, but it's, if I was telling you earlier, mm -hmm. there's always one or two. In the jury room, <laughs> yeah. who were like, I know he did it. I know he did it, and trying to get them to just relax and and just use the evidence that we had to make that decision yeah. was the the hardest thing. Yeah, you know, at the end, they we had we had no choice but to let him go. But was it, it a unanimous thing? Oh yeah, well yeah. I mean, and but one one gentleman said to me, "You're so confident that 
it's not guilty. And I said, yeah, because the evidence isn't there. It's as simple as that. You know, no matter what we be- what we think or what we all believe from our own perspective, the evidence does not prove that. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's really tough when you have the suspicion or the feeling that yeah, this guy probably did it, yeah. but did they prove it? No. Yeah. Well, no. justice doesn't work on he said, she said. Correct. You know it what doesn't, I mean? and you can, you can, and it, no matter what you believe, no matter what, how good they are, as far as saying yes, he did it, and you, you look in their eyes, and you can see that they, and in my eyes, they were they were truthful. Not but, to mention that human recep- perception is like the worst evidence ever. Yeah. It is. So. <laughs> but, but that's but that's what thirty five years, and I haven't been called yet. Yeah. Watch this, Dan. Yep. Yeah. Why? <laughs> You're gonna go <laughs> old. You know, <laughs> you know that you're gonna it's go only home. a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm. So you know, with know. my luck, it'll be in May. Um, yeah, May nineteenth. <laughs> right. Oh yes. Well, in Massachusetts, the way it works is you get called in, and it's the same kind of thing. Sixty, eighty people are there, and but if you do not get picked for a jury that day, you're done. It doesn't matter. Right. It, it, you know, if you, it, you, you go for that day and if you get picked for a trial, well, then you're stuck as long as that trial goes. Mm. Right. And of course, in my case, it was the longest trial that they had at the time. Um, the longest trial, you know, and it was a, a by Pastor Padron. A, it was a, it was a, it was a significant case and it, it kept me out of work and that I, I really hated that. I, I've never, the one time, um, you know, when I was uh, I was at working at another shop and I was on another podcast at, a, at, at the time, um, the only time I ever missed the podcast was being on jury duty. And when there was no legal way for me to get out. I couldn't say, excuse me, Mr. Bailiff, I have a podcast to be on. A cigar podcast? <laughs> uh, no, you stay where you are. You should have said that anyways, just for them to be like. Well. <laughs> and um, uh, in, in the end, in our in our case, you know, we uh, all came to the conclusion that uh, uh, the person who was accused of shooting this person actually did, um, even though it was not the person that they, they meant to off um but it was it was wild it was wild you know we were all taken out on a field trip you know to see the place where the shootings happened and wow that's cool know, and with you know the trial of course you know it's never like on tv it was like a year after the whole thing happened but because i guess it was an ongoing investigation and it was a trial the the place wasn't allowed to fix up what had happened so we're all out there looking at you see the bullet holes and where people were standing and stuff like that and it was it 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 really was it was intriguing to see how the process worked and um yeah and very very interesting it did take several days of deliberation for everybody to come to the conclusion that that was a a, a guilty sentence um and you know i think yeah, if I remember right, the person was already in prison for, ha, had been convicted of another murder. Um, and so this was going to end up being a sentence on top of the sentence that he was already serving. And um, it was wild. So he, he had already been convicted. Of, uh, of another murder. Before this next trial came out. Yeah. Wow. yeah, it was like yeah. it was several things happened uh, all right. in this yeah. incident. He was already found guilty on one, yeah. and here was the thing on the other. Uh, but okay. he, yeah. the, the, and this was the really sad thing, was that the, the guys, you know, had were going out for a revenge. Uh, it wasn't even a killing. You know, it was a... You know, it was a revenge for a, a beating that had happened. Retaliation. And um, uh, so they go to this late night party at this at this uh, uh, complex, you know, condo complex, and they thought they saw the guy that had done it, and it was somebody completely unrelated, who was just at the party because somebody had said, "Hey, why don't you? We're having a block party tonight. Why don't you hang around?" 
I don't usually do things, you know. My wife and kids want me home, but I'll, I'll stay. And he got shot in the back of the head. And um, uh, it was just it, wow. it was just really sad. Um, but uh, I'm hoping for something like a traffic violation <laughs> or, or something that can be resolved real quick. You yeah. know, did he, didn't he speed? Yes, you know. Or pleads out. Or pleads out, something like that. Um I, I don't know what, what uh, you know, if, if, I, if I had to, like, not show up at Twins for two or three weeks, I think Sean would be pulling out his hair, <laughs> you know. Um, it would be. Won't be the only one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if there's anything you can do for me, Sean, you know, just let me know, please. <laughs> you gotta, we got a few months to plan, though. Hopefully we'll have some uh, other people in place by then who can. You know, take care of stuff if I'm not there. We'll see. What just happens. around the busy season, just <laughs> when it's ready to get going. <laughs> just when it's mm-hmm. right, right at Memorial Day yeah. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm. So, um, I, I, I kind of want to wait to go to the next topic because it, you know we got we got a whole other third thing of pipe tobacco to go to how long have we been doing this one oh 20 something minutes yep um you guys ready to move on to bullet yep. number three yep mm. i am <clears throat> okay let's get the third one here let's see and so that's going to be from this tray here and so I'll... you want one or two well two yeah two there you go Dave, there you go. Thank you. All right, I'll take a couple for myself. A couple of wheels here. A couple of coins. All right. All right, let's see what we got here. This pipe's actually maybe a little small. Maybe I'll get a bigger. Biggins? See that? That's what's great about a man cave, people. Just you need open a bigger up, pipe. Just open up the cabinet. Open up the cabinet and get a bigger pipe. That's how I roll. Stavinelli Condale here. Very nice. See, and that was just enough. Boom. Look at that. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get this thing started here. Get the five started. Mm-hmm. I'm just shoving these in. Shoving them in. Yeah. I hear you're good at that, Dave. Yep. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Great mouth. All right, right off the bat, this is different from the other two. A lot more, a lot more fruit. Yep. A little bit more woodiness to it, lighter wood notes. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah. Hmm. Fruit, earth, wood. Yep. Touch of spice. A little more tang now. Got a little bit more of that tanginess. Like the first one? Not as much, but it's there. All right. It's like it's been tamed, muted. It's no, it's it's like it's like it's been uh like there's a topping on it or something. Mm. Woodford to the palate. Yeah. Definitely brings out more of the wood notes, I think. <sighs> oh, so good. Definitely still has that spice in the retro, but it's a lot mm-hmm. tamer than the other two. Mm. It's definitely sweeter. Yep.
The spice in the retro is definitely good. Yep. Smooth, though. Mm. Smoother. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a subtle sweetness, Ooh. too, in that, that retro, retro as well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's definitely smoother, but it's more flavorful mm. for retro ale. But Woodford brings that out. Mm. Woodford's bringing out a little bit more of the sweetness in the retro yep. and sweet. on the palate. So I think it's 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 a it's complementing the Virginia notes in this one more. Mm. 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 Either way, I mean, it doesn't matter. No matter how you slice it, <laughs> no, 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 pun, no pun intended. The Woodford has been phenomenal with all three. Yes, it has been a totally great agree. great pairing with all three. So if you like Virginia Perique blends, Woodford is Woodford the way. Woodford is, the Woodford is the way. Mm -hmm. I love Woodford. Woodford is mm. just to me. It's 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 it, a, it's a it's a bourbon that you can. It's first of all, it's it's priced perfectly. Right, right around thirty bucks. Thirty right? bucks. Thirty yep. thirty five bucks. You can pair it with almost anything. Very accessible, mm -hmm. and it is so good. Mm. It mm -hmm. really, really is so good. I mean, I I I love this. And again, it's it's something you can have with just about this type of tobacco. You know. A lot of cigars go very, very well with Woodford. Mm -hmm. uh, me medium plus upward is just it, it just pairs perfectly. Yeah, Woodford Reserve has been a repeat offender in my house. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yep, and the bar, God, the seven twenty four lounge just mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's I think it's become their number one in terms of it, what the bourbon that they well mm -hmm. the seven twenty four barrel select mm -hmm. Woodford has just been outstanding. Yeah, I mean. You know, and then we can I cannot wait until the new release. Our what pick comes maybe in next there. month, maybe. Yeah. We'll have to keep tabs with Tyler mm. to see when that's gonna come out. Yeah. Uh, Th oh, by the way, thank you, Tyler, for yeah, yeah. thank, thank you, Tyler. Tyler. Bottle of Woodford. Um he was on the show a few weeks back when we uh did the um Woodford tasting for the next barrel select uh that will be available at the bar. It takes a few months for it to get there. But uh, he gave us this bottle um, of regular Woodford. Oh. Along with that, we decided to save it just for this uh, podcast. Oh, yes. And I'm very glad I did. Oh, yes. I'm also very glad that I was able to control myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. I, was sitting there <laughs> I, I can't believe it was full. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the seal was still there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It, it was, was, uh... it was, it was self-control. Yep. yep. Self-control. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, one of the things that, that I think now that the year's kind of ramping up, January was kind of quiet at Twins, but now events are kind <laughs> of coming back into the the fold for things. And, um, you know, the, f the first thing that's coming up at, at Twins is a, the Super Bowl party for mm -hmm. this Sunday. Yeah, baby. Um, up at the lounge at, at Londonderry, the 724 lounge where the bar is. Um at five o'clock, it's going to be uh, uh, a Super Bowl party where um, you're going to, you know, pay for your seat. And you're not just paying to sit there and watch the game. You're, you're going to get food. There's going to be all sorts of football type of finger food and snacks and, and uh, um, appetizer kind of food there. Maybe some pizza. It's, it's, you know, that's still kind of in the works of what the final menu is going to be. But there's going to be food there. Um, uh, you're also going to get a uh, 724 cigar along with that. And if you um, reserve one of the tables, a six-person table is um, uh, $360. There's a four-person table uh, in the actual lounge, that's going to be uh, two forty for that. That is also going to come with a bucket of beer. At, uh, if you get a table, everybody's going to get a beer as well. But um, there'll be five dollar drafts all day too. Um, it's going to be it's going to be really good. But you can watch the game. You'll have a comfortable seat. Um, mm -hmm. I know that it, I know that the tickets are or the seats are already getting bought up. I don't even know if there's any left. Um, but that's this Sunday if you want to take advantage of that. If you're looking for a place to enjoy a cigar, smoke inside. If you can't be here at my place, 
<laughs> you can pay to be somewhere else. Yes. <laughs> and uh, enjoy uh, watching the Super Bowl. And that that leads to another. Are you guys planning to watch the Super Bowl? I, I will. You, you, are you yeah. going to watch it? Yeah, yep. I will. I'm, I'm going to watch, watch, watch the game. I'll be home probably by mid first quarter. Ho- yeah, hopefully. Because mm-hmm. downstairs closes at six. Yeah, six. Yep. And then they're going to stay game. open, of course, for the whole game. Right. However long that is. Right. Now, you know, are, are you guys excited at all this about about the Super Bowl I'm, this year? I'm not really all that excited, although I. You look at it from pers- pers- the perspective of two teams that uh, really haven't seen a Super Bowl. <laughs> it's the first I'm time that's happened in and, forever, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you, you're the, I'm you're rooting, rooting for the Bengals? I'm, I'm totally going for the Bengals. I'm, 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 I'm actually Bengals. rooting for L.A. And, and, and maybe more for Stafford because I know he's, he's, a, he's a good quarterback he, mm-hmm. just because he was on a team that just didn't work out for him with Detroit. And mm-hmm. now he's got a team that seems to have it all together. And uh, you got two <clears> – <throat> Excuse me. You got two young uh, head coaches too. Yep. Um, and you know, both are uh, you know they're very excitable, um, very good coaches. The teams together, I think, are just phenomenal. I mean, Cincinnati just came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, really. I mean, yeah. LA has already been there because we Patriots played them a few years back. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've always been you know near the top. Cincinnati really has been you know languishing and and maybe obscurity for a while, and now they're. You know, uh, twenty plus team. years. So <laughs> I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna. It, it will be a really good game. And uh, the fact that they're playing it in L.A. I think, you know, obviously, L.A. is. I don't even know what the what the. I don't. I don't follow anything. Yeah. Keep, When's the that last time in. that happened that the Super Bowl was ho- hosted, hosted by a state team? that's in the La- state of La- emergency? Last no, last <laughs> year too with Tampa. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, last year with Tampa and Brady. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, I'm 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 gonna vote for I'm I'm sorry vote I'm gonna I'm gonna root for L.A. And that goes against everything that I've <laughs> kind of believe in. I'm not really an L.A. fan, but mm-hmm. you know, I, and not L.A. in the team, but just L.A. in general. I just want but, the Bengals to win because they haven't in so long. Good for them for getting all this way. Yeah, you know, either way is fine. Yeah, I, I think I'm, Stafford more than but Burrow's has it's got a huge career. He'll 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 be there if he doesn't make it this if, he, if they don't win this year. He'll he'll win it another year. He's a he's a good quarterback. But uh, Stafford, you know, he's been around for a while, and I'd like to see him win it. Mm. Mm. Are you going to be uh, more interested in the uh, uh, Doctor Strange Super Bowl commercials than in the actual game, Dave? Um, probably yes. <laughs> Remember, well, let's talk about that for a second. Remember when commercials, the commercials were the 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 everyone could the well draw. they couldn't wait. There was a big draw. That yeah. it was a big draw. And they were funny. A lot yes. of them were just hilarious. hilarious yeah. You know, you had, you had at least two or three really, really good I know, ones. I know my favorite was the original Budweiser Frogs. That's your favorite Super Bowl commercial? I, I can't. I, every time I see that, I still laugh. You know, Bud. You know what mine was? Bud. Terry, Terry Tate, office linebacker. <laughs> that is well, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that was. I still play that clip. Every once in a while, I get to get a laugh. That mm-hmm. to me was just hilarious. That was yeah. the, the fact that they, they hired him, uh, an ex football player, to keep his the, the owner kept his employees in line by this guy <laughs> was just <laughs> just phenomenal. I thought that was so well written, so well yeah. acted. Yeah, just no, a, just a great funny. great commercial. That was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know where I'm going to be with the the Super Bowl this year. You know, I. If I watch it, it'll be great in the sense that I have no skin in the game. I can watch it and enjoy it. Yeah. You know, when when the you know being a New England guy, you know, when the Patriots are in it, it's all you're you're all full of angst and mm-hmm. you know getting all stressed out with whatever happens and and um, I remember the 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 Super Bowl with when the Patriots were playing the Falcons and we're down, you know, 27 to 28 to three, three in, yeah. the, in the, the end of the third quarter and, you know, just giving up, you know, and thinking maybe we should just start drinking now, but for different reasons and than we had intended. And, and, um, it, you know, just, it, and then, and then they end up winning. Yep. It was, it was, you know, just such an amazing game and, um, you know, but it's nice to watch football when you're not so wrapped up in the team, 
so that you can just enjoy the players for who they are and what they do and say, oh, that was really great, yeah. no matter, you know, who it is. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, it's – it's, but the, the, the halftime shows have been get to me, have been getting, like, less and less interesting to me. Yeah, no, no. And the commercials have completely lost Yeah. It. I don't know why – you know, if you're going to pay, you know – X number of millions of dollars for a 30 second spot. You better make it something memorable, you know. And now it seems to be the commercials that people are looking for is the summer blockbuster that's coming out. And yeah. They're going to preview the, the, um, the preview for the movie will be first aired on the Super Bowl. And that's why people watch the, you know, the commercials because they're waiting for that. You know, I wish I wish Disney had had put a stake in there for the new Kenobi series because I feel like that would have been like an awesome Super Bowl commercial. You know they be. haven't. How do you know they haven't? I haven't heard nothing, so I don't know. But well, see, I that's mean, the thing, Dave, because back in the that going back a, a long time ago, they would wait until the Super Bowl to show the commercials. Right. And then you wouldn't know. In recent years, they would release them before. Yeah, so you can watch them So online. now you know what's going to come, and like, okay, big deal, you mm-hmm. know. And So maybe they're going to go back, and maybe you might be surprised, man. Maybe, maybe that would will. be awesome. Yeah. Maybe they will. Did you guys, did they, either of you guys watch the uh, Pro Bowl? No. No. I don't watch the Pro Bowl. No. It's kind of silly. It is silly. No. I wish they would just get rid of it. Just give out the awards. Forget the game. I don't know. That's just me. I, I, I'm a lot of the lot of the players that you want to see don't don't mm-hmm. come to it. Mm-hmm. You know, they 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 opt out. Um, I don't know. Doesn't make any sense to me. No, well, it's a, nobody yeah. nobody really plays either. You know, no, it's, like it's they'll just go off and the touch half, them the, and the be half like, play, okay, yeah, yeah, half the, playing. You know, yeah, because yeah, no one wants to get hurt. hurt yeah, right. especially if they're still you know in the season. Exactly. You know. You know. And even so, it, like I mean, I forget what year it was, but there was a, a, a the the Patriots player who a running back who ended up getting hurt. I think it was in the Pro Bowl, mm-hmm. um, and it kind of ruined his career. Mm. You know, and think about that that they he, here is a here's a player who I forget his name, but he was a running back, very very good talent, and and he ended up getting hurt playing this, you know. Not even a, a sanctioned game, and they question really, you know, what is the sense of this? You can you hurt someone, and now it, it ruined his his career. Yeah. So I don't know. <clears throat> All right, Paul, you're gonna have to fill me up here. I need some more Woodford to make an intelligent right. choice here right. about uh, what's what's going on with these pairings. Thank you, Dave. Hey, you want a refill? <clears throat> Would that be a yes? I guess yes. yes. Okay. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah. There we go. Good. Okay. Uh-huh. Pick up the uh, All right. So uh, mm. do we want to, like, start our... Yeah. I think I think this is a good time to okay. start the, all right. the wind down and, and well, stuff. First of all, yep. I'm going to say all three were really, really good in their own way. Yes. Mm-hmm. First one definitely had a lot more spice on the palate and on the retro. Um, had a lot of that uh, the earthy, tangy citrus spice fruit. Mm-hmm. Very, very well balanced. Um, second one uh, was not is more earthy, woody, um, touch of spice, but the spice on the retro hail was very, very pronounced. Yep. Third one a little bit more sweetness, earthy, woody. Um, smoother spice uh, on the retro hill. I want to say the first one was Escudo. <coughs> Second one was the Davidoff, and the third one was the Peterson. Those are my guesses. Dave? I'm going to say that the first one was the Davidoff, the second one was Escudo, and the last one was Peterson. All right. Uh, let's see. How do we want to do this? Mm. See, I, I, I kind of probably know what they are. I am the Darth, Darth Piper. Piper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, all right. Well, just say what you think and see if you're right. Well, Dave, I, I would agree with you. Mm. 
Oh, ha. Really? Davidoff was the first. The scooter was the second. And the, the clue was... for me that the first was the Davidoff is I know Davidoff flake medallions have a bullseye of that's of what I that's what Cavendish I mean. in mm. the center of them. Okay. Where the other two don't. So that gave that away. All right. Uh, to me. So let's let's see here. So if I pick up the tobacco here, these lids, and see if I can do this without dumping anything. Okay. Yep. First one was Davidoff. Mm -hmm. Davidoff. Okay. Davidoff, Yay. Lake Medallions. All right. Okay. The second one here. Again, hold it so the tobacco doesn't fall out. Mosquito. Yep, it's upside down. <laughs> you, can see, like, you can see the mosquito there. Like, right. It doesn't start right. with the no. Mosquito. <laughs> and that means that the third one here is Peterson. The Peterson. Third one is the Peterson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Flake medallions. Um, the flake medallions by. I mean, the Peterson Flake medallions, the the uh, deluxe navy rolls, they're a little bit bigger too. So by looking at it, I could tell that that's probably what it was. Mm -hmm. um, this has the rum though. None of them have any toppings. None of them have toppings. Yep. Mm. And I can go back and I'll, I'll tell you what it says here. The Davidoff Flake medallions uh, say that they're manufactured by or at the Orlick factory. Um, it's a black Cavendish a bullseye with Virginia and Perique. And the um, tin description is a flake cut of finest Virginia and Perique tobaccos with a core of black Cavendish. There you go. Davidoff explanations at its finest. Uh, Escudo <laughs> Navy Deluxe. That's so it says it's manufactured by Scandinavian Tobacco Group. They, mm. they own that. Um, Virginia and Perique, no oh. toppings, coin cut, oh. and its description is a combination of full-bodied Virginia from North Carolina mm -hmm. and Virginia uh, blended with Perique from Louisiana, mm -hmm. and those are the cornerstones of Escudo. The blend is pressed and matured before it is spun and cut into coins. This process ensures the unique character of Escudo which is the Spanish word for shield. And Spanish shields were typically round, um, so it looked like a shield. That's, uh, hence, that's, that's where the name comes from. Mm. The, the totally. Peterson Deluxe Navy Rolls, which used to be Dunhill Deluxe Navy Rolls, but are now Peterson because Dunhill went kaput. Thank they you, Peterson. left the business, and uh, they were able uh, uh, Scandinavian Tobacco Group which had been making them anyway, had just bought Peterson uh, Pipe Tobacco Rights and so switched the name. So even though it's a new brand, uh, the tobacco is made um, by the same company with the same tobacco that has been doing it for well over a decade, decade and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, so Deluxe Navy Rolls is also Virginia Perique, no flavoring, it's a coin cut. And it says on the tin, Deluxe Navy Rolls are made in Denmark using hand-stripped Virginia tobaccos from Brazil and Ooh, Africa. Wow. Married with Perique from Louisiana. This recipe produces an aromatic smoke with natural tobacco flavors and lovely sweet notes. Yep. And I would have to say that now, um, after it's been said and done, the Peterson is and the uh, Woodford is my favorite pairing. The last one. So basically it changed with whatever you were smoking yes. last. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whichever you have smoked latest is No, but the, the fruits and the, the different, the complexity of this one is uh, with the, the fruits and the spice, the levels of where it's at with the, with the pairing is my favorite. My favorite tobacco by itself is actually, I can't believe I'm going to say this, the Davidoff Flake Medallions. Uh, and that was my favorite pairing tonight. The favorite tobacco and pairing was the Davidoff. Was the Davidoff. The Davidoff. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I don't know why I was thinking that was a Scudo. I thought it mm -hmm. was, I, I remember we had a Scudo once, but mm -hmm. it's been a while. The Davidoff, I remember that too, but it's been a while. Um, but Dave, I think you're right. I think the Dav, I can't believe I'm saying it. No <laughs> offense to Davidoff, but the Davidoff <laughs> is my favorite. Why can't you believe you're saying it? Well, I, 
I, I don't know. It, it, I they always, did a great I, I always job. Think, I always, yeah, I always think Davidoff and cigars. Yeah, mm. and to, I mean, we didn't. I mean, no. did you even know that Davidoff made tobacco until like what, a year or two ago? No, no, well, I didn't either. Yeah, it wasn't until Jesse came in and they you know, told us about it. And and I think I know we were pleasantly surprised when we had it, but tonight it really, really shined through. I love that Perique, uh, and the I could, bullseye, I could, so the nice. bullseye, and I could, I could, I could feel it on my a tongue. It could, adds that nice sweetness. Oh to yeah, it. But, the, but the but the but the the spice though, mm. the spice was pronounced on the palate mm. and on the retro both yep. so that's why i like that one and the woodford just paired beautifully with it yeah the woodford has paired with all three of oh yeah in great great ways yep. um they're all great tobaccos here uh, i'm lighting up the uh davidoff lake medallions one more time hmm You know why you're lighting it up again? Because you can. <coughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you're in your happy place. I'm in my happy place, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I I love the fruitiness of this. I'm, I'm having a hard time choosing a, a favorite. They they both did different things. You know, you yeah, know they all did is? different things that were really nice. They all nice. did different. And, you know, what's really interesting to me is that, you know, Davidoff can say this is manufactured in Denmark, you know, and we know that it's manufactured at the Orlick factory, which happens to be owned by Scandinavian mm -hmm. Tobacco Group, which is the same place and the same factory where Escudo is done and also Peterson Deluxe Navy, fl Navy Rolls are done. So these are all made you know, three different brands at the same factory, yeah. and they are all Virginia Periques. The Davidoff Lake Medallions add that bullseye of, of mm -hmm. uh, Black mm -hmm. Cavendish, but it's all done at the same factory, yet all of them are very, very different. Yeah. Yep. And that was one of the things I was really interested to find out tonight, smoking these things without really looking at the band or, or the tin in this case, and, and realizing that, you know, they are really three different things. They're not the same. They don't taste the same. They don't smoke no. the same. They don't pair the same. Um, the Woodford did different things with each of these three blends too, which was also very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it um, it brought out, I think, a lot of the sweetness right in the first one in the Davidoff Lake medallions. Yep. And and um, um, but also brought out the spice mm -hmm. uh, from the Perique. And with the Escudo, it kind of um, brought out the, sweetness that wasn't there. The wood notes, the, too. The, you know, and, and, yeah. and brought out, m like, more of the wood notes there. But I don't know that it really accentuated the spice. Until the retro. Until the retro there. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, the spice was completely gone, yep. really, with the second one, with the pairing. And then the third... The Davidoff, uh, the the Peterson Deluxe Navy Rolls, um, was <sighs> what do I say? That was it the most straightforward of the blends. Maybe I thought it was the the least complex. Yeah. It was, which is not in and of itself saying anything bad about it. it it's really good. But it's, you know, um, you, you get those. Well, I would was, say it it's was, still complex, but it was just well balanced. Yeah, it, it was very well balanced. It wasn't. It wasn't. Not, not one. Because you could not one note was was overpowering the other. It wasn't. It wasn't. Nothing was coming out as a as a pronounced note. I think it was like I said, it was very well balanced. The uh, Davidoff definitely had a lot more of that sweetness, but mm -hmm. spice. The uh, the Escudo was. A little more earthy and woody. Earthy, and woody. Um, no, not a whole lot of spice in the palate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the Peterson was just a nice middle ground. Yep. Bo yep. Know, both. Bottle, both. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Kind of like a hybrid. Mm. So. It was just right. Um, kudos to Davidoff and me. Kudos uh -huh. to Davidoff. I, yep. I think I would probably go with Davidoff too. Yep. Yep. 
in the end, I think I would go with the flake medallions. I gotta say, if you love a, a great vapor but want to have that spice, the Davidoff to mm -hmm. me is it. Um, I would smoke any of these three again. Yes, mm -hmm. they're all really, really good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm smoking the Peterson Deluxe Navy Rolls right now in the uh, we should deal. We should make a three pack deal. They're not just blowing smoke three pack deal. Right? <laughs> well, you know what else is really interesting is that um, the flake medallions and the escudo are around the same price sixteen seventeen dollars a tin for a fifty gram tin. And these are fifty gram tins. Um, that's what happens when stuff is made over in Europe. It's fifty grams and not two ounces. So. It's like 1.75, um, 1.76, if you're going to be really precise, ounces of, of tobacco. Um, but the Deluxe Navy Rolls from Peterson uh, come out at, at about 28 bucks. So it's kind of like the same thing with um, the uh, Sin Compromiso and the Paladin de Saka. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, it's a tweaked version of, you know, um, the same thing, but it's about 50% more than the other cigars that are there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's really, really good. Um, but I think, you know, with the with the pairing for me, I think the best pairing was the Davidoff and the, and the Woodford. I'm sorry, the, the Davidoff and Escudo are how much per? Davidoff like around and Escudo 14. are around, around 16 maybe $17. They're within a dollar of each other. And all three tins are the same uh, weight. There's no... Correct. Okay. Same weight in all three tins. Yep. But the um, the Deluxe Navy Rolls, which is supposed to be... And, and it's interesting to me, you know, Davidoff doesn't say anything about what kinds of Virginia where they're from. Um, uh, the Escudo says that it's from uh, North Carolina and Virginia. That's where the Virginias come from, those two states. Um, every place that says, hey, our Perique comes from Louisiana, well, guess what? That's the only place that you can get Perique. As a matter of fact, <laughs> there's only two square blocks in Louisiana in the St. James District where Perique is even made. So, yeah, it's from Louisiana. It's the only place it can be. Mm. But, you know, the Deluxe Navy Rolls have uh, Virginias that were grown in Brazil and Africa. So that may be why the the uh, price difference is, is, is there. Um, but it's, I think maybe on its own, I, I can't, I can't, they're all really good, but for different reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, if if I want a really kind of straightforward, medium-bodied Virginia Perique, and I don't want it to like be really over the top with anything, I just want something nice and smooth. I'd go with the navy rolls. If I wanted something that was a little darker, a little richer, I'd go with the Escudo. If I wanted something that was a little sweeter, I would go with the the um, Davidoff because that that. Um, bullseye of Cavendish that's in there. Yeah. Yep. Well, maybe we could do like a three-pack for like 60 bucks or something. 65. <laughs> maybe. 65. 60. No, not, not I even. can't drive 65 because there ain't no more 55. Hmm. That song's so out of date now. Yep. How about three for 49 dollars <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying, you know, you know. Oh, oh my. Well, guys, mm. that is our show for tonight. We mm -hmm. hope you enjoyed it. Um next Monday, of course. It I know is... I enjoyed it. This mm -hmm. has been a phenomenal Hasn't place to have great? it, man. We gotta we have to do this again. You you, you would do it again? Oh you god. Would drive, yes. You would drive a different That's easy. I don't know. I don't know what Pat was thinking. What, I don't know what's. You know, are you four? <laughs> I mean, it was raining out. All the puddles. <laughs> fall. Maybe we can do an Opus event here, and then we'll. He'll have to come. Yeah. <laughs> <Four>. <laughs>
we'll just make sure that you know it's snowing it's a blizzard and we're doing opus and oh he'll just have to watch from afar yeah, you two, know? A, two and a half inches of snow that's one half inch more than he wants to drive in because mm. his car will bottom out <laughs> Jeez. well you know snow and ice and that slush, uh, you know, that, that rainwater can really do a number on that cherry red finish that he has on his car. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't blame him for skipping out. I, I don't feel well, bad at all. Well. Mm. Jeez. But, you know. He obviously never saw we the. We still have another half bottle of Woodford before we have to actually leave. He obviously never. <laughs> he obviously yeah. never saw the Lexus commercials that we saw. You mm. know, during Christmas time when the mm. Lexus goes up like mountain tops and yeah, you know, blows through, blows through big, snow drifts big, and everything. Big piles of snow. Like, and, what's that? What car is you know, that? Mm. Yeah, it's what Santa drives. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Rudolph anymore? Um, those crazy looking headlights. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, next Monday. Uh, for those of you who may not know, it's Valentine's Day. Aww. February 14th. Mm. The holiday of love. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a real trial finding somebody to be on the show on Valentine's Day. And I'm like, is Valentine's Day still even a thing? I, it's a Monday. I mean, who's who's... So busy with their significant other that they can't do something on a Monday night. And, you know, who cares? It's Valentine's Day. And wouldn't you do that Sunday or wouldn't you do it later in the week or something yep, like yep. that? Saturday. But, you know, yep, yep. because she loves us, Tequila Talia is going to be on the show with us next week. And she is bringing a very special bottle of red Spanish wine mm-hmm. with her and... <clears throat> wine is a and red wine in particular is a great Valentine's Day drink. Yes, it is. And, and isn't it her first Valentine's Day after being married too? No, she's been married for a while. Really? I thought yeah. she just got married a couple of years ago. You, you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Really? Yes, it, yeah. Well, it, it, time it just would, flies by. The most, I mean, the most would be her second. Yeah, but yeah, a couple of years ago, I think she mm-hmm. got married. And we're going to be pairing said Spanish red wine. With the LFD Colorado Oscuro number five, number five, number five, five cigar, and Cornell and Deal's Blockade Runner, mm. which is a new tobacco to twins. It's been out for a while, I know, but it's new to twins, and so we're really excited about that pairing, and very excited that uh, Talia is uh, giving us her Valentine's Day evening, so that she can be with us on the show. We will be back in Hooksit, perhaps. Perhaps. Maybe we'll just do it here. Maybe not. Maybe we'll Maybe just not. do it right here. Maybe we'll do it here. <laughs> well, then again, she just says she doesn't travel to Massachusetts, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. But either she way. She at the border. Either way, we'll be back at 8 o'clock <laughs> next Monday right here on uh, Facebook and YouTube. And we hope you're with us. And that's not just blown smoke. Thanks for being with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Come again.